Hey everyone, I'm Christina. This is the last video about my process of creating explainer videos in a clean, minimal style. If you haven't seen the three previous videos, I'll leave the links in the description box. Today we will talk about post-production and precisely sound design. Though I would like to point out that I only share my own workflow and my own ways of working with sound, these are just options to consider, nothing more. With that being said, here are some tips and tricks that I use when creating sound for my explainers. First, let's discuss where do we get the Foley sounds from. There are options. You can use plugins and create necessary sounds in your DAW. You can download various sounds from stock websites such as Splice.com or EpidemicSounds.com and many more that are out there and easy to Google. Or, my favorite option, and we will dive into it right now, you can record your own Foley sounds. There is nothing complicated about that, and since in case of explainer videos we'll still have music and voiceover on top of sound effects, it's not that crucial if they're not as loud and clear compared to the voiceover, which definitely has to be studio quality. If you have any audio equipment at your disposal, such as microphone, an audio interface, or a good voice recorder, such as Zoom H1, for example, or something similar, awesome, good for you. But in fact, I quite often use my smartphone to record the sounds I need. My favorite part is recording whooshes and swishes. Did you know that actually you can easily imitate them with fricative consonants? Who, hot, fool, heel, shrink. Do you hear this? Let's try pop sounds, the ones fishes make. You can also work with your sounds and change them quite radically. Most of the time I use three effects – EQ, pitch correction and reverb. All these effects are available right inside of Premiere Pro and I'm pretty sure you can find the same effects built into the Final Cut too. In case of Premiere Pro, all the effects are easy to find in the Effects section. You can start typing the name of the effect you need and you will see a list with options. EQ. This line is a visual representation of the sound we hear. From left to right it shows the frequencies we hear, from low frequencies on the left to high frequencies on the right. And the volume of frequencies that we can control by pulling these circles up or down. Pulling up increases the volume and pulling down decreases the volume. I often cut the frequencies that I don't want in the sound and only leave the frequencies that I want to be heard. Let's listen how does the sound change. Pitch correction. I also change duration together with the pitch. Very simple and straightforward technique. You grab the R tool and you adjust the sound how you want. The more you stretch the sound, the lower it gets. And vice versa. Reverb. One thing to remember about reverb that it cannot be undone. If you've recorded something in a place where a large reverb is a part of acoustic situation, you will never be able to change it. Therefore, it's wise to record the sounds in a dry place, like furnished room with some fabric surround, rather than a big empty hole, because we can add a reverb later. Let's see how it works in action. Hey! 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 Does it tell you anything about the place? About its size, maybe? About its walls? Yep, it does, in my opinion. What about the duration of the sound? Does it change when the reverb is on? Yep, the sound lasts much longer. So consider playing with reverb and learning how it can change your sound design. This is it for today, guys. I hope you'll find these tips useful. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. We'll look at more tips and tricks in the following tutorials, so consider subscribing and stay tuned. See you soon. Bye!